Lesson 6.2, Generate Equivalent Fractions. It's very important you saw Lesson 6.1, and it's linked in the description so you can watch it if you missed it. We learned to model and identify equivalent fractions in the previous video, 6.1. Equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same amount. They are equal fractions. We can use multiplication or division to create equivalent fractions. We multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. We have 1 half if we multiply the numerator times 2 and the denominator times 2, the same number, we'll get 1 times 2 is 2 for our new numerator and 2 times 2 is equal to 4, we have 2 fourths. We can also take 2 fourths and divide both the numerator and denominator by the same number. If we divide 2 by 2, we get a 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, we go back to 1 half. And if they're not multiplied or divided by the same number, the numerator or denominator will get jealous. So if we're trying to make an equivalent fraction, these have to be the exact same number for both the numerator and denominator. So remember, the numerator is how many parts are counted or shaded, and the denominator is how many equal parts in all. We have one-fourth, we have four equal parts, and one part is shaded, one-fourth is shaded. How many sixths are in two-thirds? We can use a model to compare sixths and thirds. We use two same-size models this rectangle is the same size as this rectangle. See the same length? And one model is split into three parts, and we shade one part for one-third. And the other model is split into six parts, and we shade the amount of parts needed to be the same length as one-third. So there are two-sixths shaded. So how many would we shade for two-thirds? We need four sixth size parts to equal two third size parts. So two third size parts will equal four sixth size parts. We can take two thirds and multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number two. Two times two is four, so our new numerator is a four, and three times two is equal to six, our new fraction is 4 sixths. And because sixths size parts are smaller, we need more of them to equal third size parts. For each third size, we need two of them, don't we? We can write two fractions that are equivalent to one third. Here we have a circular model that's split into three parts, and one part is shaded. One of three equal parts is shaded. That's one-third is shaded. Now the model is split into six equal parts, and two are shaded. Do you see how they take up the same amount of space, of shaded space? We have the equivalent fractions. One-third is equal to two-sixths. We can relate them by doing one times two, which is two, and three times two, which is six, our new fraction is 2 sixths. We multiplied both the numerator and denominator by the same number 2. Here we have 1 third, and now we have 9 parts, and 3 are shaded. But these shaded parts take up the same amount of space. 1 third is equal to 3 ninths. If we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3, we have 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9, 1 third is equal to 3 ninths. So 1 third is equal to 2 sixths, and it's also equal to 3 ninths. This circle is split into 3 equal parts. This one's split into 6 equal parts. One third is equal to two six. We multiplied both the numerator and denominator by the same number two and got two sixths. 
And because the whole for 2 6 is divided into twice as many parts as the whole for 1 3rd, 2 6 has twice as many parts shaded as 1 3rd. Are two-thirds and four-sevenths equivalent fractions? So we think, what same number can be multiplied to both the numerator and denominator to equal four-sevenths? Well, to get the four numerator, we can multiply this numerator by two. Two times two is four. But then we need to multiply the denominator by two, and that'll give us a six, so that didn't work. And if we try the number 3, we get 2 times 3 is 6. That's wrong. And 3 times 3 is 9. We can't get to 4 sevenths, can we? No, they're not equivalent because we can't multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number to equal 4 sevenths. When the numerator and denominator are the same number, the fraction is equal to one whole. In our model, we have three equal parts, and three parts are shaded. The whole model is shaded. That's one whole model. Three-thirds, same numerator and denominator, it's equal to one whole. And if we had four-fourths, that would be equal to one whole. If we had five-fifths, that would be equal to one whole. And even if we had 99 99 that would be equal to one whole. Same numerator and denominator, that's how many parts it's split into, and that's how many parts are shaded. And the number one can be written as any fraction that has a numerator that is equal to its denominator. And remember when you're writing your fractions, this bar is called a fraction bar. It's also called a vinculum. We need to write it horizontally like this. It'll make it easier to add, subtract, multiply, or divide the fraction. You might want to try to be fancy and put it on a slant like this, but then when we start doing addition and subtraction, trying to go across from numerator to numerator, that could make it confusing. So make sure you write them going horizontally like this, and that'll help you all the way up into high school doing algebra. Because we can keep multiplying one-third by greater numbers, we could make an unlimited amount of equivalent fractions with greater numerators and denominators. We have one-third. We can multiply both the numerator and denominator by a four. We get one times four is equal to four, and we get three times four is equal to 12. We get four-twelfths. Those are equivalent fractions, one-third and four-twelfths. We can multiply both the numerator and denominator by 5 and get 5 fifteenths. We can multiply them by 6. We get 6 eighteenths. We can multiply them by 7 and get 7 twenty-firsts. We can multiply them both by 10 and get 10 thirtieths. We can multiply them both by 20 and get 20 sixtieths. We could keep going. We could multiply one times a million and three times a million and get an equivalent fraction. It's telling us to write two equivalent fractions for three-eighths. So remember to multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. We have three-eighths. We can pick any number we want. To multiply both the numerator and denominator, we could use 2. We go straight across. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And 8 times 2 is equal to 16. 3 eighths is equal to 6 sixteenths. We can multiply it by any other number. If we stick with basic facts, it'll be easier for us to do the math. We could try the number 4. Let's try 4. 3 times 4 and 8 times 4. Going straight across the fraction bar, we do 3 times 4 is equal to 12. And 8 times 4 is equal to 
32. 3 eighths is equal to 12 30 seconds. It says to write two equivalent fractions for 20 thirtieths. Now there's a division sign. We can divide them both by 2. 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. 30 divided by 2 is equal to 15. 20 thirtieths is equivalent to 10 fifteenths. We divided them by the same number, both the numerator and denominator. We could divide 20 by 4, but we can't divide 30 by 4. We could do 5 for both of them. 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. 20 thirtieths is equivalent to 4 sixths. We can multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number to create an equivalent fraction. We have 1 half. If we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 2, we get 2 fourths. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. See how we go straight across? If we multiply them both by 3, 1 times 3 is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. We have 3 6. And if we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 4, we get 4 eighths. If we multiply them both by 5, we get 5 tenths. If we multiply them both by 6, we get 6 twelfths. We can get 7 fourteenths. 8 sixteenths, 9 eighteenths, and 10 twentieths. And all of these fractions are equivalent. 1 half is equivalent to 2 fourths, which is equivalent to 3 sixths, which is equivalent to 4 eighths, and 5 tenths, and 6 twelfths, and 7 fourteenths. These are all equivalent fractions. As these went up by 1 for the numerator, the denominator became multiples of 2. If the denominator is a 2, the denominator of the equivalent fraction will be a multiple of 2. It's going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. See that? Where the numerator is just going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and going up by 1 because that's a 1. The denominator is going up by 2's multiples of 2's because the denominator is a 2. Here we have 1 third. If the denominator is a 3, the denominator of the equivalent fraction will be a multiple of 3. The numerators are going up by 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and look at the denominators, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, it's skip counting by 3's, those are all multiples of 3. Here we have 1 fourth. If the denominator is a 4, the denominator of the equivalent fraction will be a multiple of 4. All the numerators are going up by 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But look at the denominators. They're skip counting by 4's. They're multiples of 4. And if the denominator is a 5, the denominator of the equivalent fraction will be a multiple of 5. So do you see what's happening with the denominator? So let's do some higher order thinking. Mrs. Kim is baking cookies. And the recipe calls for 8 twelfths cup of brown sugar. But she only has a 1 third cup measuring cup. How can she use her 1 third cup measuring cup to measure 8 twelfths? Ah, if she could find equivalent fractions that would help, especially if the denominator was a 3. So we think, what is the greatest factor that 8 and 12 have in common? Well, the factors for 8 are 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. And the factors for 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. And the greatest factor they have in common is a 4. We can divide the numerator and denominator by 4. 
8 divided by 4 is 2. That's our new numerator. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. That's our new denominator. We have 2 thirds. That means Mrs. Kim can use the 1 third cup measuring cup two times. She can fill it and do 1 third and then scoop up more brown sugar and get another 1 third. And we're going to learn more about this in the next video, 6.3. So in 6.3, we're going to learn about simplest form and writing equivalent fractions in simplest form. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.